Hello, I'm Chris Patterson, and this is Stock Watch on Wednesday, the 26th of June, 2024. All information is general advice may not be suitable for you. Always consult your financial advisor before making any investments. All questions from viewers should be sent to stockwatch at fnn.com.au. A few market observations I have. One, Federal Express last night jumped 15% on bullish forecast. They're a good indicator of economic activity. The bears are still hibernating. Presidential debate is this Friday at 11 a.m. Sydney time. It is extremely rare for a bear market when it is expected. Here are a few charts that you should find interesting. This one I've kind of covered previous weeks. S&P 500 without the Magnificent Seven and with the Magnificent Seven. Obviously, the higher line, the dark blue, is with the Magnificent Seven. The other day when the Magnificent Seven dropped and the markets overall were flat, well, the reason we were up was because excluding the Magnificent Seven, that meant all other companies were up. And we followed that because obviously we don't have any of these seven companies here on the ASX. French bank performance. This caught my eye. The top yellow line is the composite index of all the European banks. The bottom lines are French bank performance, which means be a little careful of French banks. A long time ago, I was managing corporate cash and doing a repo program and reverse repos. And Drexel Burnham suddenly had their yield go up. I didn't know what was happening. But with higher yields, that means something's happening. I stopped doing business with them. Well, six to nine months later, they went bankrupt. Australian super returns. This is fascinating because the far right, the black bar chart up, is only half year performance, which means that this year, 2024, super returns look like they'll be pretty good unless the next six months are mediocre. Here's the chart of the MSCI World Index. It shows it's still strong and performing well. For those of you who want a global equity exposure, but you don't want to pick countries or regions, this is a good index. Artificial intelligence hype in action. Well, again, this is getting to be an old story, but the blue line is NVIDIA. Well, the stock has dropped quite a bit this week. However, last night it was up again. All companies that go up quickly usually have a consolidation. It doesn't mean that they're going to go back down and then stagnate. I mean, look at Microsoft, Cisco, Oracle. A lot of these tech stocks shoot up, consolidate, and maybe drop some, but then they go to new highs. This chart shows the Arizona economy since 1976. What is important here is take a look at the blue shaded area on the right. That is the economy from 2021 to the present. And this is relative strength. The Arizona economy has never been better right now, which means that from an incumbent perspective, Joe Biden, he should be knocking it out of the ballpark, as Americans would say, that one big factor for electoral success is strong economy. So let's take a look at the poll in Arizona. The recent polls are showing, surprise, Donald Trump is ahead of Joe Biden. It does not make sense. But I include this because a lot of this election does not make sense. And the polls are not always right. However, they're not wrong by much either. Right now, Joe Biden is within three percentage points. That's a problem because the margin of error with most polls is two to three percent, and this is a battleground state. He should win this, actually. But right now, it doesn't look that way. Here are two companies that I wanted to share with you today. First is Perpetual Limited. Code is PPT on the ASX. It's trading right now at $20.96. This is a five-year chart. It doesn't look very healthy. I mean, this, this company has done a lot of things that have not added shareholder value. But looking at the current fundamentals, these are Bell Potter estimates, by the way. Currently, it has a market cap of $2.4 billion. Bell Potter's price target is $27.60. That's a huge increase from where it's trading. They have revenue growth rate 
from 2023 to 2026 at 13% per annum. The earnings per share growth in this period is 6% per annum and the dividend growth is 4.5% per annum. These are all solid numbers. The PE on the 2025-26 earnings per share estimate is $2.25. Now I'm using the average halfway between the 2025 estimate and the 2026 estimate. This is a PE of only 9.3 times. That is cheap. This company's had problems. Looking at that chart, you understand why. People are actually leery of this company turning around and going up. The yield on the 2025-26 dividend estimate is around $1.69. This is an 8.1% yield. This yield is too high. This is another reason the market is nervous. Really high yield indicates that dividends going to be cut. Free cash flow is around 5%. The payout ratio is around 75%. After its demerger, it is more of a pure play on asset management. Post demerger, it is estimated to be trading at only 3.5 to 5.5 times EBIT. This is very cheap. I rate it a buy. However, I would like to qualify it. It's a little bit of a speculative buy. The second company is ComputerShare. I've covered this before. The code is CPU on the ASX and it's currently trading at $26.02. This is a five-year chart also. It just continues to perform, although the upside has slowed recently. Most brokers have a very high price target. These estimates are from Macquarie. They have a price target of $29. A lot of other brokers are at $30, $31. It has a market cap of around $16 billion. The revenue growth is estimated for 2023 to 2026 at a negative 1.9% per annum by Macquarie. However, the story here is earnings per share growth in this period is 10% per annum and the dividend growth estimate is 15% per annum. The PE on computer share for the period 2025-26 estimate is $1.41 and a half. This is an 18 times PE. The yield on the 2025-26 dividend estimate of approximately 71 cents is only 3%, which by the way is pretty good. Payout ratio is around 50%. ComputerShare is a share registry company, but they're also a corporate trustee. Their global corporate trust division is now 41% of their EBITDA. I've always liked this company. It hasn't gone up as fast as I expected, but the markets have been kind of stagnating in a way, other than Magnificent Seven. I rate it a buy still. At $29 or $30 price target, that's a very good increase and the yield is attractive. As always, if you want to learn more about anything I covered today, contact me on stockwatch at fnn.com.au and direct your question to me, Chris Pedersen. Have a wonderful week, and I hope you are profitable. Thank you.